November New Twig. Hello artist, that's number 29 on the November New Twig. And I don't believe it, that's almost the last episode. Uh, the next one will be the, the last. And uh, I, I'm so happy to, to share this adventure with you. Um, on the previous episode, we're talking about vector blur and vector generator. You are, um, uh, you were very focused on the vector blur, so now you are talking about the vector generator. So, if you remember, we use the vector blur and the velocity to create uh, the uh, the motion blur on CG on some of the, uh, some um, some plate too. So what is different with the vector generator? On the vector generator, uh, you have the possibility to create your motion blur. And there is a difference between vector blur and motion blur. The vector blur uses the velocity. The vector generator is more accurate. It tries to find where is the pixel on the frame, previously and after the frame. That means you calculate the offset of a pixel through the time. I just give you an example. This is a frame 54 and the, the number 54 um, is uh, the central reference. So we have in the, um, in the vector, blur, vector generator two kind of layer. In the motion you have backward on forward. The backward explain to the software how to push the pixel from the previous frame to go on the central frame. And there is a forward channel. The forward channel explain how to take and pull the next frame to be the central one. So if you take a look on, um, on the vector generator, you'll see a lot of value and this value will be the forward and the backward. And together, this creates a motion path. To illustrate what happened with the vector generator, I will show you the, the frame 54. And this is a previous frame, 53. You see there is a difference. I will copy the motion from the vector generator in the ID distort. So the ID distort will use the backward, that means the channel who explain how to push the previous frame to be equal to the next frame. And I will push the UV scale to one. You see there is a, a difference now, yeah. You push the picture and if I compare now this frame to the next, as you see, the software try to push the element to be equal to the next frame. Now talk about the forward channel. So this time I will take the frame 54 as a central again and the next frame, the 55. And in my eye distort, I will use not the backward, but I will use the forward. And just remember, the forward channel explains how to take the next, the next frame to be equal to the previous frame. So, I just push to one the UV scale. And if I compare now my frame 55 to the previous, 54, as you see, it tried to push the frame. So this is the way for the vector generator. It try to uh, find it try to find where the pixel goes or where the people come uh, where the pixel come from. And this technique will be used a lot, uh, for example, by Chronos. You can use a Chronos to uh, accelerate or speed down uh, a, a, a plate. But you can use uh, the background and foreground vectors to explain to the software who to create a better result. So that would be nice to create a better motion blur, for example. 
Oh, that could be nice to create a very nice slow down effect. But that's not all, because we use the vector generator for the speed, but you can use it for something else. I will take a plate again, and I will just extract two frames, the frame 99 and the frame 120. So there is, between these two frames, 21 frames. I will use a switch just put together these two frames as a sequence. So if I go on 99 to 100, as you see, I directly go to the first frame to the second one. And I will use my vector generator. My vector generator will just create a path motion and it we we'll try to find where the people go or where the people come where, where the pixel come from. So I will have two kind. I will have one to explain where to go and a second one to explain where I come from. And I will use these two paths with my famous copy. So I will copy the backward and the forward. So after that, I will use an ID store. The first ID start will be the ID starts from that will take the frame 99 and I will use the backward and if you remember the backward explain how to push the previous frame to the next one. That means if I push the UV scale, I will create a kind of morphing that will push the frame 99 to be equal to the frame 120. That seems to work. So I will take a look now on the next frame, the frame 120, I will use my high distort again, but this time I will use the forward. The forward explain how to uh, push the, uh, the next frame to be equal to the previous one. So if I play a bit, you will see, this time I will start to, um, I will have to, uh, up, come on my friend. So I will have uh, my frame 120 and when I push to 1, I will go back to the frame 99. It's just morphing. So now I will just create some expression. The first one will be control the ID start to by the ID start from. When I will put 0 to the UV scale for the from that will be equal to 1 for the UV scale but if I push to 1 to the UV scale from that will be equal to 0 for the ID start 2. To create this expression I will use a lerp. The lerp gives you the possibility to use a, um, a minimum value, a maximum value and it will create the morphing between the two numbers by the reference one and the reference will be the value of the id start from the value of the id start from will be 0 to 1 so that means if it will be equal to 0 i gave the values 1 and if i go to the values of 1 that give us the value of 0 so that's explain why when I play uh, with the scale, we see I have the totally inverted effect. And I will just add a dissolve. The dissolve will be controlled by the ID start from again. Uh, when I will push to 1, that will go from 2. So I will see at the first time the frame 99. And when I go to zero uh, to one, I will go to the frame 120. And as you see now, we have a kind of morphing pretty cool. And this is only sync to the vector generator. So if you want to create some cool morphing or if you want to create cleaning frame when you have uh, some disturbance on a, on a sequence, you can use this trick. 
So that's all folks. I hope you appreciate this course that's really particular this time because we are talking about CG, vector, morphing. Um, don't forget, this is for the Movember. So if you want to uh, give donation on my Movember press, that will be really appreciated. And uh, I, I will see you on the next and last episode. So um, take care of you and see you soon.